Assalamu alaikum, everybody. We're here with um, Brother Kevin, and he is a convert and will be sharing some of his uh, reflections about Ramadan, inshallah, with us. Uh, Brother Kevin, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much for being here with us. Alhamdulillah. Um, alhamdulillah. Um, can you tell us, uh, let's start by uh, you telling us about your first Ramadan. What were some things that, um, some things or expectations that you had going in? And maybe you can tell us about what ended up being a reality and what were some surprises for you? Well, um, Bismillah is a sort of a, 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 an embarrassing story and that, um, you know, I, I took Shahada when I was real young after reading the autobiography of Malcolm X and I was just um, uh, another kind of kid living in Kentucky who didn't know any Muslims or have sort of any access to any Islamic education and so um, I was really bad at it for a really long time. I was one of those unmasked Muslims after I from, lived in Kentucky till I was about 15 and I moved to the DC area and um, kind of was one of also a, a great number of um, what you call kind of unmasked Muslims in that kind of late 90s era in the DC uh, area. Um, but, you know, believed in Islam in general, but didn't have really any um, practical understanding of how to do it right. So um, it wasn't until I actually went to law school and took an Islamic jurisprudence class, which is in uh, 2009, that I actually even learned about uh, the pillars and the necessity of them in Ramadan in particular, which I didn't know even when Ramadan was in the year, um, kind of uh, before that, but um, I'd also been dealing with various health problems and uh, a bad back and uh, was off medications for that, and um, neck and nerve issues and um, some other stuff. So I kind of just gave myself a pass in 2010, but then um, in 2011, um, it kind of I was out of law school, was um, trying to get my, my license to practice law, but was kind of stuck without having it um, for various reasons that um, maybe get into another time, but um, sort of not relevant to the Ramadan story. But anyway, I was um, working for Kinder USA, which is a charity focused on um, Palestinian children, mainly as a social media coordinator. It kind of fallen in love with social media coming out of the Egyptian revolution, which um, they gave me a, a much greater feeling of connection to the kind of the global Ummah in, in a great number of ways. And so um, seeing in particular at the, at the time I was following the, the Libyan revolution and seeing that those folks were fasting while they were in that conflict kind of made me um, feel ashamed for having not fasted before and for having um, even neglected it a year before just due to some relatively minor health issues ultimately. So um, that's 2011 was the first Ramadan when I when I actually fasted and um, my expectations were um, that it was going to be brutal and, I, and part of the reason I didn't fast in 2010 is because I was terrified of the impact on my body and my health didn't think that I could handle it um, and um, it turned out to be not as bad as I thought. It was certainly a trial, um, but um, yeah, not, not as bad as I thought. And ultimately, as far as the physical uh, impact, it, uh, ultimately the um, the feeling of connection to the Ume Lars, which I had been without for so many years, um, really warmed my heart and my spirit and gave me a, a feeling of uh, spiritual strength that I had never known before. And um, it was a great, great benefit in my life in a number of ways. Um, you know, subsequently, I haven't had the same back or neck issues or anything. Like, my general physical health is a lot better than it was back then. Um, and I, I kind of credit the, the discipline that um, I, I began to cultivate in my first Ramadan. Um, yeah. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Thank you for sharing that. So you said that um, when you started fasting, it was, a, it was a way for you to also connect with the global ummah. Um, did you, were you able to find that sort of communication, uh, connection with the local community at all? How, what have your experience, experiences been in terms of uh, sharing Ramadan within the local community? 
Well, that's um, in the, the D.C. area, at least where I was at the time. The, kind of the only Muslims who were in my, my personal sphere were, uh, you know, the black American Muslims who were either unmosked or uh, in OI, which, um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm an Irish American person, and so I'm not allowed in the in OI um, community. And um, that's part of kind of my my separation from, from the community at large was that being the main point of connection within my sort of hyper local community. And, um, you know, I, I, at one point, um, almost sort of went to Adam's mosque with, uh, with Mom Majid, but, uh, was a little put off. My parents were both, um, I'd say like sort of nomadic activists and, um, participated in a lot of civil rights stuff back, back in the sixties and seventies. And, um, as you know, some other people in my family did. And so, um, you know, like I, was in, I knew what federal surveillance looked like, you know, before um, I was very old. I was very familiar with all the stories of COINTELPRO and infiltrations and whatnot. And I have my own sort of uh, anxieties about having been potentially entrapped at one point um, around 2004, 2005, or attempted to be entrapped um, wouldn't ever work on me because I don't do that kind of thing. Couldn't be talked into it, but um, I was kind of terrified of the the local um, mosque outside of my sort of DC inner city community. And then I, I kind of saw like me as, a, as an outsider and a person with this kind of civil rights background as being a, a prime target to kind of be, for lack of a better term, sold up the river to the FBI um, or, who, or whoever else. And um, my mother does a lot of work for Muslim charities as well. Um, so she was a little bit terrified of that happening and advised me to be extraordinarily cautious. Um, and also at the time I was working for Kinder USA who had to sue the FBI for um, harassment to get them to, to stop messing with them so they could do their work um, in peace and ultimately did reach a settlement and stopped getting harassed so much. But um, you know, the, there's always sort of that, that risk and so, um, yeah, I, I felt alienated from the, the sort of suburban mosque community and, and not safe there. And um, I was actually alienated from kind of the inner city mosque community. So um, actually the only iftar that I went to in my first year was um, on Capitol Hill that my mom took me to because she was you know lobbying and worked with Sakha Foundation, Islamic Relief, and a lot of other more Muslim organizations. And so she got me the, um, the invite. And so um, anyway, the, to, to, to tell the story, um, I went went to that, and um, we first got there. You know, we broke fast, and it, the little food table that was there, and um, kind of got into a conversation with a um, sister who was there with her young son, who was um, talking to my mother about the work that she did, and kind of working towards volunteering her young son to help with with my mother. And um, then. It, it, certain point like Keith Ellison and the ambassadors and all them show up and are up at the, the stage talking. Actually, Amal Majid came in and um, was standing there. This is my, my, my first sort of Ramadan experience where I remember of the community was um, kind of got in between where my mother was in the stage and ended up kind of encroaching on her space a little bit. And um, the sister who, who we had been talking to um, kind of pulled her hand back and uh, struck him on the shoulder. And uh, he turned around and looked at her, kind of perplexed, and she just sort of made a hand motion, of like, why don't you watch where you're stepping? And uh, he, he realized that he had kind of encroached on my mother's face a little bit, and he turned around, he bowed his head to her and apologized and uh, got out of her way and gave her her, her kind of personal space. And so that was um, you know, kind of my first experience with the, the kind of greater community. Um, for at an iftar, it was a, certainly an interesting one, and certainly, from from my perspective, a really endearing one. As um, you know, I, frankly, I've, I've seen, I saw women gunshot um, multiple times in, in in the streets in D.C. Uh, with my own eyes. I know about a lot of violence of women and saw it in a, way too many ways. You know, more than I'd like to remember. Um, it's very very common in, in, in that area, in that community, and in that culture. And to see, um, you know, Mom Majid being such a um, big personality and important figure in the community and also a physically large man, um, 
kind of humbling himself and showing deference to not just the, the sister who struck him, but also to my mother who you know, was not Muslim her own self, um, was really uh, a breath of fresh air as far as um, dignity, um, adopt, you know, and, and good behavior and appropriate ethical um, intergender relations. And so, um, yeah, that was my the most positive experience in my first Ramadan for sure. And um, helped help me get over my, my fears about the, the rest of the broader community and um, began to hopefully integrate. Ultimately, I had to move out to California to um, kind of get a fresh start before I could um, really immerse myself in uh, uh, the local Muslim community better. Mashallah. So, so how have your Ramadan experiences changed over the years? Um, have you been able to kind of bring in uh, family traditions or cultural traditions into kind of like to tie over um, what you grew up with to new things that are that came with Ramadan and Eid celebrations? Are you able to do that? And have you been able to do that? It's a sort of an interesting question. I, I can't really put my finger on anything. Like, um, you know, alhamdulillah, in the last few years, both my siblings, my first my, my younger sister and then my younger brother, who I live with, have both taken shahada. And I um, certainly made it a lot easier to practice Ramadan um, with, with my brother practicing as well. Um, even before he took shahada, he started, um, you know, kind of inching his way into the fast as like a solidarity fast with me for a few years. Um, and, and that kind of made it a lot easier. But, um, you know, like I come eat, I wear like my, you know, my, my best Nikes, you know, um, as a sneakerhead sort of a guy. Um, and, you know, I might get myself a fresh pair of Nikes for, to celebrate Eid. I got, I got some in the mail right now. Um, <laughs> already looking forward to wearing around my condo because I, I can't go anywhere. The, um, quarantine, I, I'm assuming we're going to still be in quarantine come, come eat this year. But, um, you know, we used to, uh, there was a great fried fish place out here and you know, being originally from Kentucky and also BC area, we're, we're big on the fried fish. So we'd have our, try to have big fried fish iftars and um, nice. yeah, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, the, the present exchange is um, sort of one thing, but um, I think just taking the opportunity to try to um, give gifts to neighbors or whoever else and, and do charity and that kind of thing, which, you know, kind of coming from that, that civil rights background, we're always sort of taught to be good citizens, sort of in my family, good members of the, of the broader community. But um, so sort of taking the opportunity of, of Ramadan to, and, and, and need to dig deeper and to give more, uh, whether it's uh, financially, if you have the opportunity or um, through some kind of service um, is really the way, um, I think that the best way that I say I channeled sort of my, my personal familial culture and history into the, the practice of Ramadan. MashaAllah. Uh, do you have a favorite Ramadan memory that you can think of? Um, you know, definitely the, I see the, the iftar, um, the first one I went to um, with um, Ma Majid was um, the one that stands out in my mind the most because it was kind of a, a transformative experience. Um, as far as that goes, also, um, you know, uh, having my brother uh, take shahada just the first Ramadan that I had with him where he oh. was practicing last year and uh, we had to pray together, honestly. It's, my favorite, um, Mashallah. my favorite memory was, yeah, praying with my brother in Ramadan. SubhanAllah, that's amazing. And may Allah guide all of our, our loved ones to Islam, inshallah, I mean. Yeah, inshallah. Um, what do you look most forward to as Ramadan approaches? Um, well, I mean, sort of generally, um, and I guess probably this year as well, it's that um, for me kind of toward the end, you get that, um, I call like Ramadan strong. Um, you know, the, in the beginning, you the coffee headaches and um, you're tired and um, feel a little depleted. Um, but um, sort of like they say with marathon runners, um, 
you get into it at a certain point, which and I only know this from hearing it, I'm not a marathon runner, but um, or I haven't been in a long time at least. Um, you, you get that second wind and um, you find a strength sort of that you didn't know was there. And um, that definitely tends to happen in Ramadan uh, for me, um, kind of toward the, the second half. And um, yeah, that's, that's definitely sort of my, my favorite part, like getting that feeling of unlocking um, inner strength that um, I hadn't been able to access before um, and, and figuring out what the, the best application of it would be and how to sort of apply it and use it to kind of grow my life. But it, it always kind of feels um, sort of miraculous when, when that happens and um, really invigorating in, in a number of ways. And so that's uh, looking forward to that, that Ramadan second wind, that Ramadan strong feeling again. Mashallah. Mashallah. So I have one more question. Um, you've experienced several Ramadans and uh, this video is for everybody, for our community at large, but there's a lot of new Muslims out there who might be experiencing their first or second Ramadans. And uh, I was hoping that you could share some advice or some thoughts that you wanted to share with them in particular. Oh, well, yeah, to, um, I suppose first, um, say salam to all my, uh, convert sisters and brothers out there going through it to to start. I, I, I really appreciate having you all as a part of our greater family. Um, love seeing you at the mosque when I have the opportunity and all of that. But uh, inshallah, maybe next year. Um, inshallah. It's uh, you know the now we're all on in quarantine, um, which I know is is really devastating to a lot of the. Uh, kind of born Muslim community, but uh, kind of to us converts. Um, many of us at least have been isolated in our Islam for a long time. And so um, that part's no big deal, nothing new. Uh, not missing out on as much. And I get to focus, I recently watched um, uh, a great uh, cookbook from Sheikh Rami at MCC last year, which any of you can find on, on the YouTube channel, which um, I highly recommend. It's been great um, for the for the quarantine for sure. Where he talked about um, that Ramadan is supposed to be the the month of the fast, not the month of the feast, and uh, really kind of embracing the hardship of it. Uh, which um, also I watched the the Ramadan prep video on uh, the Khalil Center's website. Um, I highly recommend. There's a little bit in there about um, just humans generally are adaptive creatures and um, adaptive people and. Um, the hardship is gets kind of like lifting weights, but for your your conscious and your and your spirit, and that you put yourself through it, and you will sort of gain gain strength through it, and not being distracted by a bunch of iftars and community invites and social obligations, and being able to really hone in on your relationship with Allah and focusing on that in in whatever way makes the most sense for you um, personally and particularly in quarantine i found a lot of these um youtube videos like uh, yakin also has a, a great uh, resource as far as um, lectures to watch they're easily digestible for um, new muslims i think um, in addition to mcc in addition to um, coil center but um, i recommend mainly just um I guess stay hydrated. You probably heard that before, but you know, they want to focus on that. The hunger part really isn't so bad. It's the, the dehydration that can, can get you messed up. Um, uh, chia seeds are a great thing to have for suhoor because they kind of release the hydration throughout the day as you digest them rather than just sort of the water all at once. So I um, kind of always like to have a chia seed infused smoothies in the morning, which tends to, to make it a lot easier. But um, yeah, don't don't worry about like having to get as much food as as you normally would and just cramming it in in the before or the after. Like, just go ahead and embrace that you're going to be a little bit hungry, that you're going to be a little bit thirsty, and that's the point. And it's okay; you can handle it. You might not think that you can, but um, humans are resilient. And um, you you look around at the global umo. There's so many of us who don't even get to eat meat um, ever. Uh, even much less sort of even sometimes for Ramadan, but that's it. So, um, you know, we, you, you can handle more than you think you can and um, just be patient with yourself, um, be merciful with yourself 
I always would um, tell my siblings that like I'm a Muslim, not a masochist. So, uh, you know, if you get to a point where you feel like you're negatively impacting your health, like just go ahead and give yourself a, a break. Take a day if you, you know, if, if you need to, you can always make it up later. Um, it's, it's better to ultimately mind your health. It's between you and you and a lot ultimately, you know, and um, don't let yourself feel peer pressured or whatever into hurting yourself. But at the same time, um, just remember that, um, you know, through hardship comes ease. And that's part of the whole point is to uh, put yourself through something so that you can kind of gain strength and think about it like spiritual and uh, psychological exercise and um, kind of embrace the struggle. And um, inshallah, you'll, you'll get the rewards. And just remember that the second wind that Ramadan strong is, is coming and it, it's there for you. MashaAllah, that was uh, amazing advice. Thank you so much, Brother Kevin. Do you have anything else to say before we wrap it up? Um, can't, can't really think of anything. Just, um, yeah, it's, this is going to be a wild one. And uh, inshallah, I'm looking forward to, um, I was really looking forward to um, praying at MCC this year. Would have been my, you know, normally I, I go to a lighthouse, but um, I'm, uh, yeah, inshallah, next year I'll get to do uh, Ramadan at MCC. Inshallah, Allah is the best of planners. So may Allah help us to make the most of Ramadan as it is this year. I mean, thank you so much, Brother Kevin. This is part of your private and personal story, and we really appreciate you sharing it with us. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be able um, to contribute to the community however I can. So, um, yeah, thank, thanks for allowing me the, the chance to to get my non-financial zakat in is uh, like so many others. I know we're going to be struggling um, financially with what's going on in the world right now. I may not be able to do all that we'd like to do with our zakat this year. So um, finding ways to, to give outside of financial means is um, really a blessing and I'm grateful that MCC gave me the opportunity. Inshallah, there'll, there'll be more in the months to come. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So fuck.